Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good morning everybody. Welcome uh, to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com uh, weekend uh, update show. Hope everybody is uh, having a great start to their weekend. Uh, again, hair is getting longer, shaving not as frequently, but again, we're all still here. At the end of the day, uh, it's all about health. And um, again, if, if you think about uh, what's happening right now in the world, you know, all our you know, all our expectations and fantasies really need to be curbed down. And that's what we've been talking about kind of on a daily basis, just really uh, appreciate life. And uh, if you go back a couple of days, you know, the governor of Georgia uh, made a decision. OK, they're going to you know, reopen things up for business uh, as of yesterday. You know, all you can do is say a prayer. You know, all you can do is say a prayer. And if you if you are uh, a resident uh, of Georgia, again, you know, just stay safe, you know, even though everything quote unquote is open for business. Um, again, this is my, my opinion. I think it's incredibly, uh, incredibly negligent. Um, but what the hell do I know, right? What the hell do I know? It's just one man's opinion. So please, uh, stay safe. So let's talk about the market. Uh, very, very aggressive week. Um, if you are, uh, a beta trader and this is what we do, um, it, it, incredible, incredible ranges. Usually again, these things have very, very big aggressive ranges with this type of, of market, you know, with the increasing amount uh, of short sellers. And again, this is, it, it, this is not a market that's supposed to make sense. We've been, you know, we've been talking about this now for weeks. Um, you, you almost have to feel bad for the, the natural bull seller. Again, I'm, you know, I trade ranges. Um, I've been coming in flat every day for a very, very long time. And it doesn't make a difference to me as long as I can grasp market sentiment. Um, I don't care if I'm wrong in my initial opinion of what's going to happen in the market. I'm just going to wait for things to play out long, short, doesn't make a difference, but you, you really have to go. Um, you really have to be frustrated. You almost have to say a prayer for, for the, for the perma bear. I mean, you have all the data in front of you. We have a ba basically a standstill economy. Um, you had what, 25, 30 million people maybe by now, uh, that have filed for unemployment, uh, jobless claims exploding through the roof. Um, you have housing starts way down. Who the hell, again, who's running out right now and buying a house, right? You can have automobile sales and everything is, is completely standing still. You have this whole buildup in supply of, of oil and the oil market. Uh, this week, just the, the front end, I believe it was the front end of the June contracts, uh, was down 30% just, just for the week. And, and, and if you thought things couldn't get any crazier, um, you saw on Tuesday the WTI expiring May contract went negative, right? Again, you trade long enough, I guess you see everything. So it actually went negative on the day, uh, which is the most unbelievable thing you can do. And with everything going out, with still, you know, with still everybody on lockdown, for the exception of Georgia, um, the market is amazing. The market is absolutely amazing. And if you took all the headlines out of the way and you were just kind of stuck in a box, which we kind of are uh, in our homes, and just kind of looked on the surface of the market and the indexes were unavailable to us, right? News was unavailable to us. And we're just looking based on price action, you would think we're in the most rabid bull market of all time. And the key is when all this first started, people you know, just kept on re uh, really asking me all the time, like, what's the difference between 2007 and 2008 uh, during the mortgage mess and this? And my first initial answer was, well, we knew what we were up against during 2007, 2008. We knew what happened. We knew what led us uh, to that point. And everything was scary because the financial markets we're collapsing right before our eyes. Okay, but at least we can go outside. We can go to a restaurant. We could, you know, we can go to a bar if we wanted a drink. I don't drink, uh, but you know, life was normal based on every little thing that we take for granted now. And you fast forward now, and you to look at the the market that we're in. The market that we're in compared to what we had, and it took me. I, I didn't. I didn't have a great year in two thousand and seven because we couldn't figure out what to do. Like we we were lost. We really couldn't figure out by two thousand and eight. 
we started figuring things out. And by 2009, that was November was the generational uh, bottom of November of 2009. But this market, we, you know, the market kind of fixed itself within the first two months. And you're, you're seeing ridiculously aggressive bull market action. You know, people in 2007, 2000, and nobody was chasing anything. There was nothing to chase. Now you have, you know, stocks like, for example, not that, you know, that I was playing this thing on Friday, but you have stocks, for example, like a MESO. Again, any, anybody who chases a stock here, forget about even the trading aspect, it basically shows that there is no fear, okay? Even though we're all stuck at home and this, that, the third, you can tell the level of aggression in this you know, COVID-19 market versus the lack of aggression uh, during the mortgage crisis. And if you look at the technical scoreboard with everything that's going on, it, it's amazing. And I said this on Friday, it, it feels like a meteor would have to hit the earth, wipe out half the population to get a downtick for the bears. It's the most unbelievable thing I said, uh, unbelievable th thing we're seeing. But this is just the reality. The market is acting incredibly well. Uh, beta is doing fabulous, right? That's the best way I, I can say it. But I think the most important part of what we saw came Thursday, kind of just to, sh to show how strong this market is. If you guys remember, and I talked about this on the Thursday night video, just in case you guys didn't see the, uh, didn't see the video. If you guys remember a couple of weeks ago, okay, not a couple of weeks ago, about a week ago, um, Gilead had a really, really, had a huge flow of, I, I believe it was, where are we? We were in April. The April weekly, this is last week on Friday or Thursday, we had a huge amount of activity of the Gilead 85, 90, uh, 90 calls. And this is when the stock was at what, 74? And people knew, people knew they were, gonna, you know, they were about to release something or leak something. And there was a hope that finally the headline came out, not directly, I think, from Gilead, whatever the case may be, I don't even remember all the way back to Monday. But the point was the market rallied like seven, 800 points on the merit that Gilead was going to be the white knight. You know, they were going to save the day. They were going to have the formula to cure this whole thing. Okay. And the market exploded that day and came Thursday, right? Came Thursday. There was an early release of some data. It wasn't from Gilead. Okay. It was a premature release. That's what she said. Um, from Gilead. Okay. And it basically said the initial trial, they didn't use the word fail. I don't want to use the word fail, but it didn't live up to the whole magic bullet. Everything was going to be fine. Save the day scenario. And the Dow went up that day from up 300 and it went red. Okay. It red on, went on a day. And instead of tanking on the news of a failure, right, of a failure that really got the stock up in the first place, you know, the market just kind of sat there and did absolutely nothing. And that's when you knew if, if you weren't, if you weren't convinced that this was a strong sentiment by then, you should have been convinced. You should have been convinced that when it, it didn't sell off on the news that it rallied the market only a week before. And that was very, very important. And come yesterday, again, they could have sold off the market several times. And, you know, if you look at the cues, especially uh, towards the end of the day, you know, you had this big rally, right? You had this really, really big, big rally towards the end of the day. And if you've been watching this broadcast now for the last, you know, even for the last several weeks, you know how important this 213 over under number has been. Every time we reclaim this 213, we ran every single time uh, we closed below this 213, we, we, we started going back down. So the fact that you have all this negative news, all this stigma behind it, all these deaths, all these still cases that are, again, plateau, whatever the case may be, okay, blow off top on the, on the coronavirus, what, whatever you want to believe, okay, you have everything against common sense and sensibility and logic, and we reclaimed the 213 level, and we started rallying back, very, very aggressive, but I thought was also as equally impressive, you know, from the bullish technical side of it is what we started talking about at the beginning of the start of earnings, so the question was, because all these companies were coming out with, well, coming out with basic news and, 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 and dissemination of news saying that, you know what, a lot of us are going to cut back, okay, on forwarding guidance, okay, cut back on any type of, um, any type of early release to, to, not to the analysts, but kind of early release to what we expect our quarter to be. 
there was a lot of companies that turned around and said, well, we're going to use this as a safety vest. Okay, The fact that we're not going to provide forward-moving guidance, I think it was a very intelligent move. Okay, incredibly intelligent because again, when an Apple came out and said, "Hey, look, you know, don't be, you know, don't be surprised, uh, you know, because of this whole COVID, you know, the Apple stores were closed and this, that, and the third. Don't be surprised that we're not going to have this incredible quarter." And a lot of companies, I think most companies, started uh, kind of starting mir uh, mirroring what Apple was doing to bring down expectations way down. So when they came out with their quarter. There wasn't nothing to be upset about. We get it, right? We get it. Our business is stopping. Our business is being put on hold. Our business is being cut. Uh, and you shouldn't have any expectations because, we're, again, we're all in the same boat. So when earnings season started, the question was, how is Wall Street going to react to companies taking down expectations? And it all kicked off with the banks. Goldman Sachs came out with earnings. Citibank came out with earnings. Uh, Bank, of, Bank of America came out with earnings. You guys noticing the same thing, right? If you look at every single chart, it looks exactly the same thing. Not one of them sold off on earnings, okay? Because again, Wall Street started doing something that we talked about prior to earnings, giving companies and giving America a mulligan, right? Giving a, everybody a mulligan, everybody giving almost like a do-over and said, all right, as long as you're saying when you're not out of business, as long as you're saying you're not going chapter 11, We'll give you a pass. And you started seeing that with the banks, which was very, very important. Because again, think about it. You know, banks are going to be the most aggressive domino. Think about it. Banks retail, right? Banks retail. And the next thing you know, uh, we're kind of in 2007, 2008 again. So Wall Street started giving the banks a mulligan. And, and when Wall Street saw that, stock prices started kind of leveling out a little bit and started moving back higher. And then tech season kicked off. And even IBM, if you guys remember, the day before earnings on IBM, and this was right over here, and I said, IBM never, never, I mean, go back to your charts. IBM never makes their quarter anymore. And again, they didn't make their quarter. And the stock gapped down like three, four dollars. And look what happened. They even gave IBM a benefit of the doubt. So IBM, three days later, after, after coming out with earnings, and this was the earnings, three days later, they were higher than the highest close in the top of the range. So again, if this is a company that never beats their numbers anymore, there's no expectations in, in IBM. So they held up the banks, they held up IBM, and then Netflix came out, right? You, had, you saw this massive surge in subscribers. And again, that was understood. You had 15, 16 million, uh, 15, 16 million additional subscribers uh, that, that came into their business. Obviously, people are going to be you know, stuck in. They're going to watch Ozark. Again, if you haven't seen Ozark, okay, this is what you do. Start with season one. Thank me later. Um, but again, the, the, the notion on the street was, well, now that Netflix had this magical run, from 290, right? From 290 to 450, okay? Was the, the price baked in, okay? Was the, the appreciation baked into their earnings? Again, we knew the earnings was gonna be fine. It's not gonna be horrible. We knew that they were gonna have additional subscribers. Again, take away from their business model in the whole macro sense, we actually knew everything that was gonna be seen. The question was, how is the stock gonna react? And the stock really didn't react. Again, it had its first initial push to 480, and then it came back in. They tried to sell it off. But if you look at Netflix, again, the moral of the story is just like with the banks, just like IBM, okay, they're giving Netflix a mulligan. And not because a mulligan of stock price. It already ran up, right? It already had its 200 point, 150, 200 point run up. The point that the market is telling you right now, sellers are comfortable, okay? They're not obscene. They're not upset. Uh, they're not. They're they're comfortable at levels, and when the stock continues to get mulligans, and the street is now giving a macro mulligan to everybody, okay, to everybody who's reporting, okay, that is a ridiculous bullish sign. And you add that with the fact that they didn't sell off and kill the market on the Gilead news, okay, on the Gilead news that the initial trial, I guess. Um, didn't meet up to at least early expectations. These are ridiculous, ridiculous signs. Now, this week coming up, you have the mother load of our earnings. You got Tesla. We'll talk about that. The greatest stock of all time. Greatest stock. I don't care what you feel about the company. The great. If you trade Tesla, both long and short, the, the top five stocks of all time, at least for me, the top five are all Tesla. 
Okay, then we'll squeeze back to everything else. Just in my, my little humble opinion. Wh whatever your feelings are about Elon and this, that, the other thing, that's a whole different story. I'm speaking from individual uh, preference. This is the, the just absolutely greatest thing. We'll talk about the uh, individual pivot on uh, uh, Tesla in a second. But you have Tesla coming out. You have Amazon coming out. You have Facebook. You have Apple. You have Microsoft. Um, and a whole slew of other beta names. And oh, by the way, if you if you take that, if that wasn't enough for market sentiment, Intel missed their numbers, right? And what do they do with Intel? Da, 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 they took the stock to green. So we're setting up very, very aggressively uh, to the upside. And again, is it possible something happens? There's another leg to drop that we go back to the lows? Of course it is. It's the stock market. Anything's possible. Again, I'm just taking the data that's in front of me, okay? I'm not trying to find something uh, in this tape that's not there. I'm just taking literally the data that I've seen, the data that we've traded on, the data that we keeps on in, keeps on reconfirming market sentiment, and we're giving the bulls the benefit of doubt going into next week. Again, if anything comes out new, we start, you know, start collapsing, taking out lows, that's a whole different conversation. But for now, okay, for now, it's super bullish. We reclaimed the 213 area uh, on the QQQs. And again, unless something materialistically comes out next week, okay, and they start discounting bad earnings and we start rolling over, again, assume that the market will continue its aggressive way. If things turn and things turn very, very quickly, we will be prepared to the other side of the market. And by the way, the other side of the market is still giving you really, really great trades. And let's get to the pivots uh, on Friday. Just a quick announcement. Um, you know, we've been showing, we've been showing these pivots. Uh, I, I try to put in, especially in the afternoons, I, I try to put in one or two um, pivots to the general feed, to, you know, to the to my general feed. Just again, especially for new traders, just to show how aggressive some of this price action is. Okay, um, and I've been doing this for eight years. Okay, for for eight years and all. On Friday, uh, I put in that pivot of that five nineteen five. Uh, excuse me, seven nineteen seven twenty pivot. Uh, on Tesla when the stock was trading like 730. I said, that's the magic number. That's going to be the number that's going to spark the stock and stock ran up into the 730s. So we've been doing this. I've been putting these pivots uh, on the on my general feed for about eight years. Okay. I, I think that's a pretty good uh, sample size of what they can do. Uh, starting Monday, I just made a decision. Uh, starting Monday, uh, everything will be on, um, everything will obviously be either on the private feed that you're seeing right here uh, or in the live webinar. So if you want to jump uh, into the feed, if this has been uh, giving you incredible uh, value over the years and you want to see these things uh, play out like they do every day, okay, um, just jump on the feed or jump on the live webinar. There's plenty of value and you're also getting uh, all the workshops, okay, all the PS60 workshops north of 10 hours of um, breaking down the, the process. So uh, if you're interested, again, going forward, uh, that's what it's going to be. So let's talk about Monday. Uh, BYND continues to be just a monster. Again, the whole premise of shortage of meat, that's what she said, um, continues for what uh, God reason, right? Continues to, to surge uh, the shares of BYND. And again, this is what started the day, uh, BYND 107. Uh, rejected twice if it reclaims can test pre-market highs again experience only 50 cents of max pain because again the last thing you want to do is get rejected the third time at 107 if you know that gets rejected why risk more than you should so uh 107 uh here's the 107 pivot um phenomenal move i mean really really phenomenal move i got long on the 107 break unfortunately I just didn't get enough size, which is amazing, but it is what it is. Um, so here's the two candles right here, 106.90, uh, 107, right? So it got rejected twice. Uh, once it took out the 107, started building, just absolutely exploded. It went all the way down to 113. Again, congratulations to all you guys uh, who caught that. Uh, Baba really didn't work that much. Um, it didn't really work. Uh, well, I mean, subjective, I guess. Uh, 203.40, 203, if it builds below, it can flush. Uh, here was Baba, didn't put up a big move at all. So here was a 20340, only only one down. Oh, excuse me, wrong stock. I knew it looked crazy. Uh, yeah, so here was the 20340, right? Here's the 20340, uh, only went down to 20282, and then it kind of reversed. Didn't didn't really work. Only went down like 50 cents. Um, Zoom, you know, Zoom was great. You know, Zoom was really really good. Um, I caught this thing from 78 into the 80s. 
Um, nice move here. So it's been, and again, there was a monster, monster uh, announcement later. We'll get to that in a second. Uh, but Zoom, 177.20, 177.50 needs to build. Could see the 181 supply experience traders only. Again, Max Payne, a uh, dollar. Here is Zoom. I mean, fantastic move. Really, really fantastic move. So here is the 77.20. Right here's the 7720, and again, I like to enter at the whole numbers because I want to see them build. Uh, it took out the 7720, and again, stocks trade from supply to supply and demand to demand. Again, there's, there's no, there's no, uh, there's no, there's no random area where they stop and it traded right into the 181 supply. So, really good trade there, uh, as well. Um, shop uh, again. Shop, not a big move at all. Uh, shop, 609, if it builds below, can flush. And again, you're speaking from subjective. You know, you could turn around and say, well, you know, I took the 609 break and it went down to 605. And again, on, the, on, on paper, it looks good, right? 609 and 605. It, 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 was, it was very, very strong. It turned around, started going higher as well. So again, if you took the trade, I, I didn't trade for a shop on Friday, uh, but if you took the trade from 609, went to 605, you made some money, God bless. Uh, very, very strong name. I actually like it very much uh, for this week if it starts confirming uh, levels. Uh, this is the big move, okay? We've been talking about Boeing for the whole week. The buyers were coming in. The 130 weeklies, the 125 weeklies, the 120 puts weeklies, right? And it finally got killed. Uh, Boeing, this is what started the whole frenzy. And we talked about the levels, right? We talked about 137 uh, was the sneaky pivot. I'll show you why in a second. Uh, 134 was the previous day's low. And 132.90, that was the macro low. So 137 sneaky if it builds below can flush. And congratulations, guys. This is definitely... Uh, the initial move of the day. We'll talk about Tesla in a second. Um, so here was the 37, right? So here was the 37. Okay, so here was the 37. It was these these two channels, right? It was the highest candles into rising support in the 60. So 137.12, you can see it, right? 137. So it gets destroyed, right? Absolutely destroyed. And then takes out the 34 from the previous day, right? 34 was the previous day's low, which was right over here. And then the next low was that 32.90 was the macro low from a week ago. And this thing got destroyed. I mean, absolutely destroyed. Uh, went from 37 to 28. I still think this thing goes lower. Is it going to go lower in a straight line? Probably not. But this thing has a shot to go all the way down to here uh, to its uh, April 2nd low of 120. So I know a lot of you guys still have a runner over the weekend. So great job. I mean, absolutely great job on Boeing destroyed. Uh, Netflix got absolutely manhandled. Uh, 424 keeps holding. If it builds below, can flush. Here was Netflix, right? So here was Netflix. Here's the 24 right here. All of 24, 24, 24. Went all the way down to 415. Destroyed it. Actually woke up later. Actually wound up putting a pivot. Never got filled. Never got even close to uh, the upside. But, you know, it actually started waking up. And I thought there, was, there could have been a, a sneaky pivot up here. Obviously, never got here. But monster move on Netflix, uh, ZM Perfect, uh, Baba take on the way down, uh, Beyond it was a fun, was fine. I just wish I would have got filled on on, on normal size, um, which was good. Netflix flush, and I said, listen, great moves. I mean, absolutely phenomenal moves. There's nothing, nothing wrong with them. Uh, here's the pivot I actually put back to the upside. Never got there on Netflix, and this is where. And this is where we talked about, uh, this is where we talk about why this is the greatest stock of all time, okay? Um, so I actually shorted this thing in the morning, okay? I shorted this thing in the morning and it went down, it went down, there was a 703 pivot. I don't remember even, even if I put it on the, on the, and it went down to 698, right? So I took some money, I took some money on the trade there, and then I was waiting for that really hard confirmation of 698, which never came. And it started rallying, got very, very strong. So what happened was Tesla just started sitting there, like literally sitting there, six, uh, 713, 715. Then we started seeing some really good flow coming in. Notably, somebody put on a, a ridiculous bet. I think it was like the 1500 calls of like the January of 2022, some ridiculous bet. But again, it started getting stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger. And the one thing about Tesla, if you guys remember last Friday, there was that 714 pivot that went to 740. Okay. So we were watching this area here and I go, look, 719, if it builds, 
this thing can really wake up. And this is, again, this is why the stock is just a beast, just an absolute beast. So here is the 719 right here. Here is the 719 right here. It stopped here twice. It reclaimed, took out the high of the day, and just absolutely exploded when as high as this, almost 731. Uh, that pretty much ended the week for me. That was done. I was done for that. I was a phenomenal move. Absolutely phenomenal. I was very, very happy. And a lot of you guys uh, caught this pivot. So great job there. Uh, NVIDIA, uh, NVIDIA, yeah, not a bad move. The first move was only like a dollar. Uh, 287 needs to build. Here was NVIDIA. I know it went higher, but that first move was only like a dollar. So here is NVIDIA right here, 287. Uh, went to like 288.27 before it came in. This move actually happened towards the afternoon. So again, nice little cash flow there. Uh, like I said, take on the way up. Um, but most important, again, mo most important, what I like about this tape is you don't need to overthink, okay? You, you really don't. You don't need to overthink. You don't need to um, try to rationalize everything. Just let things play out because just as fast uh, as there's a pivot, for example, on, on the trade that I took uh, in the morning on ZM from this uh, 78 level into the, into the 80s, you know, at any second, something can change. And we were just sitting there, and a squawk box broke the news that Facebook, right? Facebook was coming out with their own uh, video conferencing. I think, they, I think they said you could fit up to like 50 people. And I tweeted this out right away. And I said, hey, man, this is bad for uh, ZM. I know a lot of you guys. I, di I didn't trade this thing on the way down. Uh, I, was already, I was already just dead tired by then. Um, but moral of the story is you can see how quickly things change. And Zoom got destroyed, absolutely destroyed. There'll a actually be another pivot in this thing uh, on the downside if it confirms for Monday. But again, going into this week, I, I, I want to give the Bulls, again, the benefit of the doubt. I mean, look at some of these flags, man. Look at, look, look at some of these flags. Look at the 60-minute view. Look how tight Amazon's getting, right? Look how tight this Amazon's getting. Look how tight Tesla's getting. Tesla is literally one channel away from just going bananas, okay? Absolutely bananas ahead of earnings. Uh, even Netflix is holding up, right? Netflix is even holding up here. And if you look at Apple, right? If you look at Apple, um, you know, Apple on its way to earnings, everything looks pretty good, right? Everything just, really, you know, Microsoft is one day away from reclaiming the 75 area and moving higher. So things look good. Again, and I know we have earnings coming up uh, knee deep into uh, this week, all the, the major hitters, Amazons, and your Googles and your Facebooks and your Teslas of the world and Apple and everything in between. So again, you don't need to overthink. You don't. You don't need to overanalyze, especially if you trade beta. You you have such big ranges throughout the day. There will be opportunity on both sides. The most important thing is stay calm. Stay, you know, again, stay patient. And the most important thing is stay in business. Again, for all you guys, if you want to join us. Uh, in the private feed or in the webinar, uh, that's going to be the only places we're going to be putting these pivots ahead of time, obviously. Again, eight years is, I think, a pretty good sample size of what these things can do. So if you are interested, I welcome you on board. If not, guys, God bless. Stay healthy, stay safe, and with God's help, I'll see you all next week. Take care, guys. Have a great day. Congratulations for putting in the time to take control of your trading. You're one step closer to owning your future and achieving the success you desire. Want daily trade ideas directly from Dan, straight off his personal watch list? Unlock our free PS60 Vault, where you'll get nightly updates on pivot opportunities we're watching for the next day's session. Click the link in the description to get started today.